So this uh, video is going to be on being heard. Um, so I think there's a few things to recognize. I mean, everyone loves to be heard and and it's almost like one is getting life. But I think, you know, the, I mean, the, I mean, the way I sort of see it, take what you want, leave the rest, is one has to sort of see level, understand um, spiritual vibration spiritual vib vibration and the blocks of the ego to uh, one's inner, uh, one's uh, spiritual connection to the divine, the infinite. Okay, so the thing is like, for example, I think the, the 12 steps are quite holographic. So in the 12 steps, if you're mired, and I'm gonna be talking a lot on this because I think it's important in the world. I mean, a lot of people aren't in 12 step fellowships, but when you're very blocked up, one of the bigger blocks to, um, to conscious contact with the divine, with God, uh, that infinite love, is uh, the level of ego. And level of ego is uh, very strongly influenced by addiction as being one of the major blocks. So if one is eating donuts nonstop, um, or one is, um, I don't know, um, you know, being in uh, gambling, donuts, um, what else is there? Uh, spending, spending, spending addiction. Um, t uh, Netflix, no, I shouldn't say, I should, probably shouldn't label things like that. Social media addiction um, and uh, and various other things that those, those create huge blocks, which is fine. I mean, if anyone wants to eat donuts nonstop, that's not none of my business. But um, the, all, all those donuts or all that, um, all the social media, uh, all the whatever it is. I mean, there, there are various fellowship addictions, uh, love addiction, uh, sex addiction, various other things. But all of that huge, that, that creates a huge block to and creates a lot of repressed feelings and creates a huge chasm. So let's say I'll use myself, you know. So let's say uh, 20, over 20 years ago, when I was at the height of my addictions, there was food addiction, workalism, other addictions. Um, and that's great because when I do the addictions, um, I get relief from my ego. It's like, gosh, you know, I feel, I don't feel good, but if I eat that plate of donuts, I'm feeling good for 10 seconds. So that's great. Or I know I just need to burn myself out more in the stock market with adrenaline and then I'll feel okay. You know, just be busy, busy, busy. And, um, I'm just recording a video just to let everyone know. Yeah, so uh, be, be in my be adrenaline addiction, in my sugar addiction, various other things, and I'm getting relief from those things. And then, um, and of course, if anyone was to, you know, uh, so that's one thing. And so I do need outside things to give me relief from my ego. Like a donut will give me relief from my ego and I'll get a connection to the divine. It's almost like I get a shot of God by eating a donut and that's how addiction works or I'll get a shot of God by just working intensely and uh, and I, I feel like oh I now feel really connected to everyone because I'm working intensely or I feel really connected now that I'm eating donuts <laughs> I really feel connected to everyone now or you know but I think um you know do donuts and uh, adrenaline addiction aren't in of themselves they do temporarily suppress the ego and I get a shot of of, of love the, the divine love um, however, people, you know, connection to people is a different thing and people giving attention. So what, what one has to realize is how spiritually advanced is the person who's giving me attention? Where am I in my spiritual vibration? So at that time, if, if you know, and this is the thing of different people, what would happen if, say, I, I was just chugging away at my donuts with lots of repressed feelings and St. Francis listens to me for 10 minutes, you know, or Mother Teresa. What would happen if um, a 12, someone who's done a lot of spiritual work would just listen to me for 10 minutes? Or maybe even a therapist who's trained in active listening and compassion was to listen to me for 10 minutes. And what if Adolf Hitler was giving me 10 minutes of his time while he was eating a donut and probably, um, Shouldn't make any bad jokes about Adolf <laughs> giving some orders away for the running of Germany. Anyway, so um, so uh, so there's a difference, you know. If I'm spiritually disconnected, 
you know, the, the, the quality of my vibration or my ego deflating, depending on who gives me attention or what group gives me attention. What if, what if I, I'm feeling disconnected and I walk into a 12 step fellowship or a course in miracles group, but what if I walk, walk into the local satanic group? So here's the thing. So what's my vibration? How deflated is my ego? And what's the vibration of the individual or the group that I'm entering? What if I'm eating like a donut, you know, a group on eating donuts? How uplifted will I be? And <laughs> so you see the parameters, you know, but, you know, I think um, so um, if I had a choice, if I was feeling spiritually disconnected, would I choose St. Francis to listen to me for 10 minutes? Would I choose um, a uh, or to sit and, and have a 12 step group listen to me for 10 minutes? Or would I choose a therapist to listen to me for 10 minutes? Or would I choose, um, you know, let's, let's say Adolf, if you're still alive, like to have 10 minutes of listening time with Adolf. So that then gives the parameters of the quality. You know, if when I'm spiritually disconnected, my ego is inflated. Yes, there's absolute value in being uh, with people you know, I mean, if, if, if a parent or, or a friend was to listen to me, because when they listen, as I sort of see it, what happens is, depending on my, if my vibration is higher than the person who, like, if St. Francis, if like someone listens to, if Adolf listens to St. Francis for 10 minutes and really gives him his attention and his focus, you know, St. Francis is not going to notice any difference in his spiritual state. You know, he'll be, you know, it's like, blissed out before meeting Adolf for 10 minutes, after Adolf for 10 minutes, with Adolf listening to St. Francis, still blissed out. So there is no, there is no event that happens when Adolf is listening to St. Francis for 10 minutes. That's like an extreme example, but let's say um, I'm just busy eating my donuts and, and sort of pigged out on donuts the whole day and St. Francis gives me 10 minutes of attention. I'll probably be blissed out and stay blissed out for a day in the spiritual divine because he's like, why? Because my ego will just sort of like, you know, probably scramble into nothingness. And I'll, I'll start to feel the state that St. Francis is in for 10 minutes and get blissed out as well. So there would be an advantage, but of course, probably I'd probably start eating donuts three or four days later and probably feel like I need to see St. Francis again, just to get another spiritual uplift and another uh, dose of deflating my ego. But I think it's very beneficial. I think that is the power of the 12 step groups. And one of the, the lines they say in trust, we'll love you until you can love yourself. I mean, for me, that means uh, we'll love you. So you will deflate your ego. So you get rid of sanity. So you can actually work the steps and get a, a connection to the divine yourself or the course in miracles removing all blocks to, to the love. I mean, I think, you know, um, would Buddha and, and Jesus need to have the attention of someone? I don't think so. But I think it's general. The other thing aspect I put on human contact is that the programs of the ego and the animal within my ego, as it, you know, my ego is an animal. So it loves contact with other human beings. It loves connection with other human beings. It's got all kinds of programs, you know, it, you know, it's got programs that you should feel lonely if you haven't had a connection with another human being. Um, you're probably going to feel quite ill if you've not seen a friend for a long time. Also, you know, I can get um, I can get hooked on to high vibration groups and people, uh, which are great as long as they, they last. But if they stop, like I used to go to 12 step meetings, spiritual groups, regularly live ones. I don't anymore. So there was a drop, you know, it, it did have a thing, you know, being sort of blissed out in sp high spiritual groups. But, you know, it just meant that I had to see, okay, I'll have to do some more work so I can get the same spiritual connection in dissolving uh, beliefs around the need for contact, the beliefs around uh, needing groups, uh, the beliefs around human contact, and just see what beliefs are, are in me that are dropping or, or disconnecting me from the infinite love, which is always here, which is not reliant. And this is the thing with cancelling of beliefs, which we do at this group. You know, it's like being one's own doctor. What, you know, if, if the whole world changes and I feel different after the whole world changes, like let's say there's a huge pandemic and you're not allowed to go out of your house, 
and that seems to be ever, and I feel more disconnected. What beliefs are being activated in me, which mean I actually feel worse than I did before. And I have to like pray to the Holy Spirit, like illustrate to me what beliefs I've been dependent on from the old world, which are now sort of being activated, probably from my animal or, or from the collective consciousness or from social programming, family programming that are now being activated, which I need to please highlight them in my mind, Holy Spirit, so that I can cancel them. I'm not limited by all these things, all the events in the world. I'm an infinite being subject only to what I hold in mind. Or God did not create me feeling disconnected if I can't get to my groups, my support network, you know, um, it's not real. And then that allows the ego you know, 100% uh, elimination of all limiting thoughts would mean I'm just right in the in the radiance of that infinite light. So um, in terms of, is that practical? I mean, if I had, I mean, you know, finding all the limiting beliefs, and I mean, I wouldn't do it. Probably if St. Francis was next door to me and I could just go around and just spend lots of time with him every day. And I, I personally, on a practical note, choose to just, um, sit in the presence of St. Francis, or if there was a 12-step group full of fellows doing serenity prayer uh, and sort of blissing out in meditation right next door to me, I would choose to go there and get blissed out in that 12-step group, of course, the miracles group, rather than, I mean, why not take advantage of it if it's there, you know, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't want to sort of be a masochist and sort of cancel everything. I mean, I, I haven't got enough time. This body's going to expire. I wouldn't have enough time to cancel everything. So that's on a practical note. So I think it's really good to have, um, but there is a difference in the quality of the, of the contact. Like someone who's done a lot of spiritual work is like an, an illuminated light bulb. So I'd, I'd choose them before someone who's just eating donuts the whole day. That sounds quite judgmental, doesn't it? But not meant to be judgmental. Okay, um, and uh, let's see, where's the, where's the stop recording?